Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we will be talking about how to validate Ansible playbooks using Ansible Lint um, in our CICD pipeline in GitLab. Um, this is important in my opinion because it is a great way to kind of see, hey, you know, I'm going to add something to a repo and you want to make sure that it actually is like legit from, you know, a syntax perspective and everything has, you know, good practices and whatnot. Um, so this is kind of a good way for if you're managing a team or if you're just doing it by yourself, um, that you can always make sure that you valid your files are validated when you when you do commit it. Um, the Ansible also comes in actually a few plugins. I actually do use it in Visual Studio Code myself, um, so you can just install it and it will you know show you the errors. But in this case, we're going to just show it on GitLab because essentially you know you you don't have all your developers going to install the plugin. So um, you know we're going to do it with you know all the code is going to be committed to. So. This video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my content, or want to sponsor me, or send me some free swag or hardware, my email is in the description below. So, okay, let's get started, guys. All right. So the first thing that we will do here is we'll we'll edit this web IDE, but let me open a new tab um, because we'll need to create a few files. Um, so with how we create our DNS server back way, way, way like over a month ago now with the videos. Um, we actually did do a CI CD kind of deploy for this pipeline um, where we would have a validate step and a deploy step. So we're going to do the validate step in here and we'll make another video on the deploy step on how to deploy it out to um, your Ansible Tower. So what we'll do is actually copy this here and we will create a dot GitLab CI dot YAML file here, right? So we'll paste that. So we're going to use our default CentOS uh, seven container um, and use that. So if, if you are wondering, um, we're going to just be using CentOS 7. So some of the stuff that I will mention here is probably because I'm using CentOS 7. If you use a different one, it could you could run into different error or you might not run into the same error that I've ran into before. Um, so that is something to note while you do this. So we'll just we'll take away the deploy step because we aren't doing that. So what we'll do here is write the validate step here. Um, so there's actually a few things that we'll do. Um, so we need to set a few variables. This is actually important because we need to set um, the lang variable um, to uh, use UTF-8, UTF-8, and then the LC all variable to also use UTF-8. This is because Ansible, you ha we'll have to install Ansible to be able to use Ansible lint. Um, and for some odd reason, it didn't set the Docker container didn't use UTF-8 as default, so there's some ASCII install issues. So we're gonna set those. We'll also set the Ansible config file um, to be dot slash ansible.cfg. The reason why we had to do this and specify the file, um, by default, it will usually read it from the repo um, because it's just in the root directory. Um, but there's like this like it's open to the world permissions like 777 type situation and that's because of how we're writing it in the container and how GitLab does things so we'll just specify it so it will force to use it. Then we will need to install a few packages so the first thing we will want to make sure is that uh, pip is installed with get so python3 hyphen pip and get. After that we will need to actually upgrade um, pip um, so by default, the base package of uh, Python uh, Python 3 pip is like so, so old that you can't actually install any packages because it references some files that don't exist anymore. So you have to actually upgrade it. Now, you can see that I have a specific version, 18 here. You can't upgrade from the very base oldest Python pip to the newest. You have to do an intermediate version, and I usually just use 18.0, and then upgrade to the latest version. Um, this was a painful find because I think this was about like a year and a half ago when they essentially started deprecating like the very oldest version, so you can't actually upgrade from the oldest to the newest. Um, and it was a really, really terrible time in my life that I had to try to deal with um, to figure that out. So, but we now know it. So then after that, once it's upgraded to um, 18, then we just do do pipe three install upgrade pip. So then it will upgrade to the latest pip, which I think is like 20 something. I think it's like 23 or something. Um, then we'll use pip to install Ansible. And then we'll use pip to also install Ansible lint. So that essentially should cover all the prereqs that are needed for what 
is happening here. Then we will essentially need to run like ansible lint and then the file name. So in this case would be patch.yaml. So it makes sense when we only have one file to do it, you know, hard code it like this. But what I'm going to show you here, guys, is we'll set us up for success for the long term where I will write a for loop. So like for um, I in and then we'll ls. So essentially ls will give you this output of these files and then we'll grep for anything with the YAML extension. So essentially it will grep this patch.yaml or anything else that we actually have that has that YAML extension. And then what we'll do with that is we'll do ansible lint and then use i as the variable because everything that's outputted here is essentially set to i as a variable. So it will loop through each file that has it and it will use i. So essentially in this case, it will only find patch.yaml. So ansible lint patch.yaml. And then we'll hit done. Um, so this essentially sets us up for success for the future when we need when we have more playbooks so we don't have to like manually add the list of files. It'll just know because we have it in the same extension, which is great. So what we'll do um, now is we'll create a few files also here. So we will create the Ansible CFG configuration file. Um, this file isn't necessarily a needed file. You can do it without anything, but I'm going to set some defaults because I'm using CentOS 7. There's some like deprecated stuff that will be deprecated in like older versions of Ansible that may be installed here. So I'm going to try to ignore that so it looks cleaner. Um, you might not get these deprecated warnings in, in if you're using a later version like CentOS 8 or something else, but I do get it on here. So we're going to do a uh, deprecation warnings, warnings equals false so that we don't get those deprecation warnings to make it look a little bit cleaner. Um, and then the other thing that we'll need to do is actually create a dot ansible lint um, file. Now this file is essentially used to um, skip certain checks. Um, the reason why we want to do this is because there is a check um, in here that will essentially say you should never use latest when when you're you know updating stuff because it, in in practice, it makes sense that you should always know what you're updating to. Like I want to update to the specific version um, because you don't want to just randomly update Java when you know you're writing a Java application and next thing you know, no one's tested you know the new version of Java with their code and it's not you know backwards compatible stuff like that and you run into issues. But in reality, that's not very helpful. Um, because like, say you want to, you know, just update all the packages in this case, like just update any packages that need to be updated. You're not going to go through the effort of looking at every single package, figuring out what the latest version is, and then, you know, specify each version. Um, so we're going to just leave this rule. We're going to just skip this rule. Um, and it's package latest. Um, we're going to skip this rule. So essentially we won't run into this issue because in, in, in reality, it's not a very good rule. And there's actually like a whole GitHub, like talk about it actually of people posting like, yeah, who's going to go through the effort of writing down every single thing to do a yum update. No one is, it, it just isn't feasible. Like that's like one person's job, like day job completely. <laughs> um, but in, in, in like a security practice, it makes sense. You should know what you're installing, but at the end of the day, that's, that's like a theoretical, that's like, that's like book knowledge type situation in like college. You should know how it, how everything works, but in reality, you won't. But you have at least general gist of why something might go wrong if, if it went wrong, right? So um, then we will actually do one more thing here. We will actually um, update this playbook and actually set a default for this. Um, so how default works is essentially if this variable host name isn't defined, it will just automatically use localhost um, or whatever I define in this. Um, the reason why I'm going to update this is mainly because the fact is there's another rule that says um, if a variable is not defined, it will essentially error out saying this variable isn't defined. Now that's actually a good error because it's like, hey, this variable isn't defined. But the problem with this is this variable is defined in Ansible Tower and it will always be defined in Ansible Tower. Um, so, um, or AWX is what we call it. Um, so we're just going to set it like this. And actually it's probably good practice to have a default in case, you know, it isn't defined because when you start making more crazier playbooks um, and you need to define things and it's not defined, um, you might want to have a default. Um, sometimes you want, you just want it to be like, hey, it's not 
there, you should really tell me it identified it, right? But in this case, we're gonna just do that just to make this work. Um, so, validate step. All right, so we'll commit that to main and we'll go to project. Hopefully this just all works. Um, so we'll go to the pipeline here and we will see that the validate step is now running. So it's gonna go through, install the packages and we will see some other hopefully cool things. Um, this may actually take a few minutes mainly because it's going to do all this. Now, the other thing we can, we, I, I'll tell you is, um, you, it, it, when this works and you know, when you have a good test, what you'll want to do is actually build in, um, your, your packages that you installed into an actual image. Um, because you don't want to be installing every single time it needs to validate because that's going to be like, Hey, so instead of taking the time to validate, which is like, you know, seconds, it's going to take minutes to validate because it's going to have to install all these packages every single time. Um, so we can put it in our actually container central S image, um, and actually tag it latest. So, um, while this pipeline runs, we can do that too. Um, so what we'll do is go back here. Um, and go to our container CentOS 7, and then we can edit this. And I'm pretty sure it would work, but essentially you would edit it um, and add it to the Docker file of these steps right here. Um, obviously you would, you would do it where it would be like, um, we would just probably concatenate this in here. We would now do a run run this, run this, run this, and run this. So then it would actually build this container image and then we could use it in the future in here um, so that it, everything would be built into this image and then we can remove these from here. So all we'd have to do is this Ansible went. Um, so that's one thing to consider as you kind of building these out to, you know, keep your um, validate, build, deploy steps as small as possible and everything's kind of put into the container to avoid, you know, rework that could easily be put into your container. Um, now, granted, you could just look up Ansible Lint Docker and just use someone else's Docker image. <laughs> um, but where's the fun in that? We're building stuff. So we're gonna use our own image and we will build from our stuff. Plus it's actually a little bit better because then you can actually configure it however you want and you can add more things to this image if you really wanted to, right? So we'll go back here and you can see that it actually ran through the steps. So you can see how it does the install, does everything here. And then we get to the bottom. So it'll upgrade, install pip, uh, Ansible, Ansible lit, and then we run this for loop here. Um, so now there's, there's some Python's warning because it's running CentOS 7, so it's you know, like Python 6 instead of like Python 10 that it should be. So don't don't sweat that out. It, it's not that big of a deal. But you can see here um, that it essentially passed. And even though it says warning here, it actually is more of like an info where it, it detected the YAML file with a playbook. So it essentially tested syntax stuff as a playbook as opposed to like a YAML thing. So, but it actually passed. So you can see job succeeded. So that means my my uh, YAML was good and Ansible and we're all set. So essentially now whenever someone commits or updates a playbook, it will go through this. Um, and then you will essentially just be able to be like, Oh, hey, well, it failed on validating. It'll give you the error of what failed, where it failed on. And then you would go back, update it, and then you're ready to go. So there you go, guys. Hopefully now you will get some more validations on your Ans Linux um, Ansible playbooks here. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.